but he come up with Diagnetics 1950. So a lot of the guys were uh, interested in studying the way to process the mind, how to clear your mind from past confusion, how to resurrect the soul to be reborn within your in, within yourself. So that's where uh, uh, Scientology started. And then they started selling it, and then it got to be the process. I was uh, in prison when the Diagnetics first started. Yeah, 1950. Uh, we we fought the establishment. Uh, the black Muslims were coming in with the Koran on the dark side of the moon. And the Islamic uh, arm of the church uh, and, the, and the masonry. I don't know how to put the masons involved in that. I don't want to get the, tripped up in the, with anyone else on any other level. You know how the occult is. You get uh, involved in in all kinds of under darkness things that are running under nooses that are running through. Uh, just I don't know. You know, it, it would take too long to explain it all. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Jude Ray, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The brain, 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 brain. Oh no, your brain has nothing to do with it. Brain is a sort of a well, I don't know, brain and brain. Now, what it does, I'm never quite sure. The Pinky and the brain. Well, that's really a clown. That's really a clown. It's easy to explain. To prove their mousy worth. My name is Jason, and I was wondering if you could tell me how transcendental meditation is different from other forms of meditation, and if it's worth the $2,500. That's a very good question. Um... Um, let's talk about the money first. Landmark Education is a global personal development company. Its seminars in 125 different cities around the world worth millions. In Australia, there's serious concern over its unsettling techniques, starting with intense pressure to hand over thousands of dollars, then taking you on a mental journey you may not be equipped to handle. Thank you very much, everybody. Very good to be here in Berlin with you all. And we're here today establishing this invincible Germany University. Okay, I'm at a landmark thing that uh, my friend uh, told me to come out to. I just had a little paranoid thought because somebody kept bringing me water. First her mom brought me water and then she brought me water. I'm like, it's a lot of water. Now I really have to pee. And I'm like, why are they bringing me water? And we have today the Teufelsberg gekauft. And we werden auf diesem Teufelsberg den Turm der Unbesiegbarkeit für Deutschland bauen. Genau, der greift uns dann an und besiegbar gegen wen denn? Ich bin ein Deutscher, der Deutschland unbesiegbar machen will. Adolf Hitler wollte das auch. Ja, aber leider hat er es nicht geschafft, weil er die Technik nicht hat. I gotta get out of here, because they've been selling me hard on this. And it's reminding me of um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the new one with Nicole Kidman. Earhart has been invited to speak to audiences at universities throughout the world on a wide range of topics, including from physics to metaphysics, systems of knowing about knowing. Sie sind ein Scharlatan! Das möchte ich Ihnen sagen! Was Sie da vorführen, ist ein ganz schlechtes Theater! Words we understand trigger things in us. You all have a history, and Roger Emanuel has triggered things. But he's a great human being doing something for Germany on the deepest level. No, I can't even talk anymore. Oh my god, I gotta get out of here before the, the water paralyzes me. If I never return, call the police and tell them it was landmark. Oh my god, she smiled too. Everybody's in on it, even the babies. Save me. 
Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Raised in a Secret Society series. This is episode 7.5 called Theta Tra. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Um, it would probably behoove you to check out the previous videos so you can understand where we're at and what's going on. But if you haven't, here's a quick recap. In Scientology, the word Thetan refers to who you are. You're not your body, you're not your mind, you're not even necessarily your personality. You are the being or the soul itself. So L. Ron Hubbard was obsessed with all the different ways in which a Thetan or a soul could become trapped. While he claimed to be freeing you from the Theta traps, he was actually a master at ensnaring people's souls. There is important technology to learn in Scientology on how to actually trap a soul because that's what he was an expert at, all the while he was telling you he was freeing you from it. I learned a lot of stuff and I don't ultimately regret the experience because even though L. Ron Hubbard might be a psychopath, there's a lot you can learn maybe from someone who's very good at capturing people. I wonder how many of the people that, the millions of people that have signed up for the Landmark Forum Three Day to Enlightenment Seminar realize that it's actually based on Scientology. Werner Earnhardt, who formed EST, which then became Landmark, is an ex-Scientologist, as is Keith Raniere, who formed the Nexium cult, as is Charles Manson, who formed the Manson cult, on and on it goes. You're gonna see two things clearly before the end of this series. One, there's nothing new under the sun, and two, everything connects to everything else. So we're gonna pick it up from where we left off last time in episode 5.5, which was called The Bridge to Total Amnesia. That was the very introduction to your indoctrination. And we're gonna be picking it up from the training routines. These training routines are so fundamental and important for the rest of the trap to work that we're going to go into detail on these. So let's pick it up from where we left off in the last episode and let's bring you up to speed on how you got onto this ridiculous communication course in the first place. So how does Scientology go about ensnaring an unwitting fate? So we talked about the Oxford Capacity Analysis, which is the personality test that you take, which has nothing to do with Oxford. It's 200 questions that's basically designed to destabilize you. Do you linger at bus stations for pleasure? <laughs> no. Do you get muscle spasms for no reason? Do your past failures bother you? Do you like to be told what to do? Do you find interest in other people? Are you often consumed by envy? Are you scientific in your thoughts? Are you usually truthful to others? Are you unpredictable? In brainwashing and the eliciting of confessions, the psychological importance of inducing a sense of guilt and conflict can hardly be overemphasized. And that's exactly what this personality test is designed to do. And it's also worth noting that in the entire history of man, no one has ever been brainwashed and realized or believed that he had in fact been brainwashed. So Scientologists start inducing a state of confusion in their subjects by raising their anxieties with the evaluation of this personality test. The Scientologists attempt to render their Mark's mind anxious and confused, and then they teach him that they need Scientology. And it's the same thing with the cult's dissemination drill. By finding the Mark's ruin, you're gonna raise their anxiety. And with their minds anxious and confused, the Mark's are then taught, or as they say in Scientology, brought to understanding that Scientology can handle that. And we talked in previous videos about how they found my dad's ruin and my ruin and where that all takes place in, in room 101. Auditing is a simple, thoroughly designed means of concentrating the mind to a state of a controlled trance. The aim and result is to progressively enforce loyalty to and identification with Scientology to the detriment of one's natural awareness of divergent ways of thinking and outside of cultural influences. Love and allegiance are more and more given exclusively to Scientology and Hubbard. And that's the goal from the moment that you step foot into Scientology. So now that you've taken the personality test and you've had your ruin found and you were dumb enough to sign up for the communication course and unwittingly made a Freemasonic handshake pact with the devil, let's pick up from where we left off in the last episode. So there's six basic TRs or training routines that we're gonna take you through on this communication course. There's actually seven, but one of them we're gonna skip because it's not that important. So as we take you through these, or rather Jesse Prince, 
and Stacy Brooks, ex-Scientologist extraordinaire, they're going to take you through this. And I challenge you to stay through to the end of the training routines, the end of this video, because this is just day one. And if you can't handle this, because it's really boring, it's really hypnotic, it's really repetitive. But if you can't handle this, you have no chance of making it as a real Scientologist, let me tell you. Today, Jesse and I are going to demonstrate uh, what Scientology calls the training routines, or TRs. Scientologists are taught that the TRs are designed to help them communicate better with other people. Critics of Scientology feel that the TRs create a hypnotic state in a person, or a trance-like state in a person, that makes them more easy to manipulate or to control. Today, Jesse and I are going to demonstrate these TRs, and you can make your own decision about what they do. The first one we're going to do is called OTTR0, which stands for Operating Thetan Zero. And the training stress of this exercise is two people sit facing each other with their eyes closed without twitching or moving or using a system or a body part to be there comfortably. And this is what OTTR0 looks like. Ready? Okay. So OTTR0 is your first encounter with sensory deprivation, hypnosis, and mind control. The hypnotic techniques used in this drill are sensory deprivation and stress, which produces an altered state of consciousness. In the Philadelphia Doctorate Course Lectures, Hubbard says that closing your eyes puts you into a light hypnotic trance. So here, Elrond lies about training you to confront. In fact, he's putting you into a trance, a trance built upon the gradient and which becomes the basis for all auditing. The sensory deprivation is audio as well as visual. The TRs are done in a large chorus room where other students are also doing their TRs. So one hears all the Scientology babble, which causes confusion and lowers the mind's defenses. Of course, the visual is completely cut off in OT TR0, and students are sat facing one another with their knees almost touching. By violating someone's personal space, as well as being violated yourself, you're going to create more stress and apprehension, which of course is the goal of these drills. In an actual training routine, this would go on for many hours, sometimes days. People talk about um, sitting here um, with their eyes closed and starting to feel very lightheaded, um, starting to hallucinate, and they have to sit there with their eyes closed as we just demonstrated, until they no longer feel these kinds of things, um, until they can just sit here comfortably and not hallucinate or, or feel lightheaded or anything like that. I mentioned in one of the previous videos that when I did this drill as a kid, it was the very first drill I ever did, OTTR0. It both calmed me of my anger a little bit, my anger issues, and it also was excruciatingly painful to do, and it made me insane in a certain way. What's actually happening is that this is the very beginning of your critical thinking being shut down, and you're being put into a suggestible state. When people are doing their TRs, they're often taken by staff members to go sign up for a course or to pay money for something because they're in this state where they don't quite know what the hell they're doing. They're in an altered state of consciousness, which is exactly what these drills are designed to do. What's actually happening here is you're being trained on how to be an auditor, which is another word for saying someone who's gonna hypnotize and abuse someone else, but you think you're doing a communication chorus. L. Ron Hubbard famously said once that the only way you can control people is to lie to them, because the moment that you start telling them anything like the truth, you're going to start setting them free. So the first lie that he told is that this is a communication course. Little do you know that while you think you're doing a communication course, you're actually learning terms such as auditor, preclear, etc., that are going to set you into this new reality. And it's all done on what's called the gradient, meaning a little bit more is added each time. It's a thought reform system, and you don't realize that when you're simply sitting there doing OTTR0. So let's carry on with the next training routine. I hope you're still with us. Once a person has passed OTTR0, they're ready to move on to the next TR, which is TR0. 
TR0 is very similar to OTTR0 with the exception that when we sit across from each other this time we have our eyes open and we're just facing each other. I'm going to be the coach here for this TR0 and so what that means is that if Jesse uh, does any kind of unnecessary blinking or if he looks away for even an instant or uh, looks down or does anything other than sitting there facing me comfortably I'm going to flunk him and then we'll have to restart the drill. So here we go, this is TR0. Start. Okay, flunk, you, you scratched your nose. Okay. Start. Flunk, you looked away. Start. Flunk, you're squirming in your chair. Start. Okay, Flunky sneezed. Start. Flunk, you're closing your eyes. Start. Okay, that's a pass. Normally, this goes on for hours at a time, days at a time, until a person can actually sit there just facing another person, never looking away, blinking very little, never talking, never doing anything. Um, I think TR0 is probably the TR that uh, critics of Scientology uh, find most disturbing. Um, it's in this TR that uh, a person really uh, develops a, a fairly unblinking uh, look at other people that, that people in the streets of Clearwater, for example, have commented on, and the Scientologists that they pass in the street um, basically are using their TRs on the people that they see as they're walking down the street. You're stuck in an incident, and you're not looking at me. You're looking at your camera. Look at me when I tell you, you're nuts. You're insane. You are insane. I can tell you're stuck in an electronic incident on your whole track. You are nuts! Period. Now, once a person has um, passed TR0, they're ready to move on to the next training routine, which is TR0 bull baited. On TR0 bull bait, the coach attempts to distract the student or break concentration in any way. And if he does that, then the person, the student is given a flunk and the drill is started again until the person can sit there having fingers pointed very close to his eye, being yelled at, screamed at, uh, jokes, whatever, until he can just sit there and not react to it. Now in this drill, Jesse's going to be the coach and I'll be the student. So Jesse's going to bull bait me until I can sit here comfortably no matter what he does. Ready? Yeah. Start. You have an eye tick. <laughs> Flunk, you flinched. Start. You have an eye tick. <laughs> Flunk, you flinched. Start. You have an eye tick. Okay, Flunk, you weren't as bad as you were before. You're getting better at it. Ready? Start. You have an eye tick. Oh, you really think you're smart now, huh? You really... Okay. Flunk for smiling. Start. Oh, you really think you're smart now, huh? You really think you have it together, huh? Why are your eyes jumping around like that? Uh-huh. <laughs> Flunk for smiling. <laughs> okay. Start. Oh, Lord, my head is hurting so bad. Ah! Pay attention when I'm speaking. Mmm. Mmm. for smiley. Start. Mmm. Mmm. Look at you. Looking like some bedpan in a mental institution. Well. Ah! Ah, <laughs> flunk for smiling, start.
Mm, you really think you got it together now, don't you? <laughs> Be careful. Be careful, I could be dangerous. Is that your mother over there? Is that your mother in the corner? What's your mom doing over there? She needs to be home. Oh, goodness gracious, the dog is eating the cat. See? The dog's eating the cat. Okay, that's a pass. You did real good. Thanks. So Jesse and Stacy are kind of doing a lighter version there of TR0 bull bait. It can actually get really brutal. I remember one time I was um, doing this drill with an older lady and I ended up just laying into her and she was like in tears by the time I was done doing this drill. And I felt terrible, but that's the thing. You're both abused and you get used to being able to take it and you also become the coach, so you also learn how to abuse somebody else. And you don't pass these drills unless you really lay into people's buttons. A button in Scientology is something that the person feels bad about. Let's say you're sitting across from somebody who's obviously overweight, then you would slam their buttons on being overweight so that they no longer have a reaction. This does a couple of things. One. It shuts down your natural defenses for being able to protect yourself or call somebody out and you just take it. And number two, it also, you feel, is toughening you up so that you can take anything in the real world that somebody says to you. That's why I felt when I was doing this drill, I was both getting benefit from it. Hey, I can stand up to anything that anybody says anymore about me. I don't have to be a, a, a sissy. And at the same time, it's also setting you up for, in Scientology, not to question anything, not to call out the abuse that you're going to see happening, but to take it. I think you look so uh, smell bad. Yep. You don't wash. Right. You need to bathe. Yep. You need to get a job. Right. You need to do something with your life. Right. You're a suppressant. I got it. And you need to stop. I know. You're a cult member. What have you right. done? What are my crimes? You, you mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have an overt on that. What are you afraid yeah, of, dude? What are you afraid of? What are my crimes? What are you afraid Don't of? Don't you have a team of what people? What are you afraid of? Why are you what afraid, afraid of puppets? Mark, you are a failed actor. Why don't you do some like acting lessons? <laughs> Get some acting lessons, and instead of being on that side of the camera, go back on this side. Get a job and make your own money. Familiar with that term? I mean, I'm here. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? What? You answer my question. Well, there's plenty to be afraid of. Answer my question. But I'm here, aren't I? Answer. You haven't answered my question yet. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. You're a suppressive. Yeah. Don't go near my kids. Shh, you never you? change your clothes. You lost your job as a floor sweeper. You're a suppressive. Nice. Stay away from my children. Keep me in, bro. Stay Keep away from me my in. children. Don't come near my kid. You are nothing. No come cycle. Is that what you were? Brilliant. No come cycle. Your TRs are brilliant. Why don't you just stop committing suppress that and live a real life? He eats, drinks, and sleeps anti-Scientology instead of having his own production. And it's sad. Wow. You're getting heavy. You're not taking care of yourself. Some kind of professor. Yeah, he looks very... You could be useful in the acting business. You might even, you might be, you might even get a career. Go back to doing something useful with your life. That you can call your own. That you can call your own. One crazy flip. Well, now I'm to the point where I can be here comfortably uh, no matter what somebody's throwing at me. Now it's time to go on to TR1, which Jesse will explain. TR1 is called Dear Alice. And what we do in TR1 is we read lines from the book Alice in Wonderland to each other. And the purpose is, is to be able to clearly read these lines as if you're saying them yourself and not reading them. What I'm doing is I'm giving Jesse some pages out of the book, Alice in Wonderland, and he'll pick phrases out of these sheets from the book. Okay, Jesse, you ready to start? Yes. Okay, start. When I'm a duchess, I won't have any pepper in my kitchen at all. Okay, flunk, you look down and we're reading it instead of giving it to me. Okay. All right, start. All right. When I'm a duchess, I won't have any pepper in my kitchen at all. Flunk, you were fidgeting while you were giving me the command. Start. When I'm a duchess, I won't have any pepper in my kitchen at all. Good. 
There is extant a pseudoscientific system wherein the patient is required to create and duplicate arbitrary systems of mental images that are autocratically selected for him by the operator. Worse still, the patient is forced to monotonously perform interminably duplicated trivial physical motions, such as touching a certain exact spot on the table or being asked a question, over and over and over, sometimes for hours. And this can go on for weeks on end. So bluntly, this is a powerful and effective technique for covertly inducing hypnosis. By the duplicated command, the subject is caused endlessly to duplicate mental image patterns wherein he is obeying the operator explicitly, time after time after time. So the subject is sooner or later rendered to such a zombie-like state that he will thereafter obey the operator's every command. So the common practice of Hubbard is to change the names of hypnotic phenomena to names of his own invention, purporting thereby to change the nature and significance of such phenomena. Thus, a form of unconsciousness experienced in hypnosis he is renamed variously Aniton, Boiloff, and Dopoff. Hypnotic hallucinations, he is called mental image pictures, and disassociation, which is what Scientology is all about, he is called exteriorization. Why you don't put your arm around my waist? Okay, Flink, you just were fidgeting while you were giving me the command. Oh, you're right, Start. okay. I dare say you were wondering why I didn't put my arm around your waist. Good. I'm doubtful about the temperament of your flamingo. Good. Okay, that's a pass. Thank you. My, what a peculiar place to have a party. <coughs> you know, Dino, we really shouldn't <coughs> be doing this. After all, we haven't been invited, and curiosity often leads to trouble. <coughs> First, Hubbard denounces or exposes the transcendental phenomena manifested in hypnosis. Then he uses the very power he has denounced, i.e. hypnosis, but the techniques he employs are of a covert type, unknown to the general public. That's going to become obvious by the end of this series. Entirely different in many respects from the previously exposed and rather obvious now you were going to sleep methods. So the victim is caught completely off guard. He's just heard all about the evils of hypnosis, and so he believes that here is a kind and honest person whom one can trust. Soon he succumbs to a different, far more powerful system of inducing a state of mind wherein the victim is under the control of the swindler, with reference to suggestions to buy costly books, take choruses and phony instructions, etc until, at long last, he is flim-flam out of his last fucking dollar. And come out the other side where people walk upside down. Oh. Now that Jesse's passed his TR1 drill, we're ready to go on to TR2. I'll read you a little bit about TR2 here. TR2 is known as the Acknowledgements TR, and the purpose is to teach a student that an acknowledgement is a method of controlling a person's communication and that an acknowledgement is a full stop. So we're just going to read again from the Dear Alice book. This time I'll be the coach and I'll read lines from the Dear Alice book. And Stacy has to give me an acknowledgement and the acknowledgement has to be a full stop. In other words, it has to terminate that communication and we move on to something else. All right, you ready? Yes. Okay, start. It's a mineral, I think. Okay. Flunk. I didn't, you didn't acknowledge me, and you didn't confront me either when you did it. Okay. Ready? Okay, start. It's a mineral, I think. Okay. Good. So the danger of all of this is that when a person is subjected to covert hypnotism, as in Scientology, without his knowledge or consent, he may develop serious and sometimes irreversible physical and psychiatric disorders, up to and including schizophrenia, self-mutilation, and suicide. Hypnosis must be done under supervision because you can effectively hide symptoms of disease that will kill you if not treated. And there's far too many stories of dead Scientologists who might be alive today 
had they attended to their problems medically instead of hiding them using covert suggestions. Bad effects of hypnosis are more often encountered by people who think they're practicing a new technology. Comparable to the invention of fire, as Hubbard claims in Dianetics, people who have no idea what they're actually doing. Hubbard tells his members to follow his instructions precisely, and he must do this because he cannot rely upon the understanding that he would have if they actually knew what they were doing, that they're practicing hypnosis without a fucking license. How queer it seems. All right. Okay, that's a flunk for not looking at me when you said it. You still have to keep your earlier TRs in. Okay, I'm getting tired of this. Okay. Well, let's keep on doing it, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. How queer it seems. Okay. Okay, that's better, but it's still a flunk because it's unnatural and you're forcing yourself to do it, okay? Okay. All right, so just make it your own and just give it to me like it says here. All right, here we go. How queer it seems. Okay. Good. But I've got to see that one mouse. Good. Okay. People don't like being ordered like that. Thank you. Good, let's pass. Now that we passed TR2, it's time to move on to TR3, the duplicative question TR. Now, with this TR, we start to move into uh, really drilling a student to be ready to conduct an auditing session as an auditor. In Scientology, an auditor is um, basically the equivalent of a, of a therapist or a psychotherapist in other kinds of uh, psychology or whatever. The auditor sits across a table from the person who in Scientology is called a preclear and asks the person certain questions. The, the person then uh, answers those questions, and, and the auditor must get an answer to their question before they can move on in, in the auditing session. So this particular TR, TR3, uh, is designed to uh, train an auditor to get an answer to their question. I'll just read you from the material on the TR, TRs, the purpose of the TR. And it is to teach a student to duplicate without variation an auditing question each time newly in its own new unit of time, not as a blur of other questions, and to acknowledge it, to teach that one never ask a second question until he has received an answer to the one asked. I'm going to be the coach, and Jesse's going to be the one asking repetitive questions, and I'm going to flunk him every time he uh, doesn't ask me the question newly and in a new unit of time. Okay, start. Do birds fly? Yes. Good. Do birds fly? Yeah. All right. Do birds fly? Yeah. Thank you. Do birds fly? Your glasses are crooked. I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? Your shirt is dirty. Okay, flunk. I distracted you. Start. Do birds fly? Your shirt is dirty. I repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? Yeah. Okay. Do birds fly? The sun is going down. Okay, flunk. You looked away. Start. Do birds fly? Yeah. Thank you. Do birds fly? The sun is going down. I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? Yeah. Thank you. Do birds fly? Yeah. Good. Do birds fly? Coercive persuasion is anti-ethical to the First Amendment. It contains aspects which could be interpreted as constituting the illegal acts of fraud, false imprisonment, coercion, undue influence, involuntary servitude, Sea Org anyone? Intentional infliction of emotional distress, outrageous conduct, and other torturous acts. Now, if that doesn't describe Scientology perfectly, I don't know what does. If Hubbard had opened hypnosis clinics, he would have been regulated by the state's board and medical profession, so he had to lie and say he invented a new technology. The dangers of hypnosis is magnified by the fact that the designer of this system of covert hypnosis was a psychopath. He had no conscience. Why not hit a dog when he's down, said LRH. What a dickhead. But Hubbard had no choice. Every good con man has to lie and generate enormous quantities of detailed notes and instructions to spin a complex and time-consuming to understand shore story that explains away the simple thing they're doing, conning you out of your fucking money. I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? Yeah. Thank you. Do birds fly? Yeah. Good. 
Do birds fly? You need to wash your shirt. Okay, flunky, come like, start. Okay. Do birds fly? Your shirt is dirty. I'll repeat the audit and command. Do birds fly? Yeah. Thank you. Do birds fly? Yeah. Thank you. Do birds fly? Your glasses are cracked. I'll repeat the audit and command. Do birds fly? Yeah. Thank you. Do birds fly? Yeah. Good. Do birds fly? Okay, that's a pass. Thank you. So I hope you're still with me, my friends. We have one more drill, and that's called TR4. And this is the drill where you put together all of the previous drills, and you actually learn how to keep a pre-clear in session. Like I said, you think you're learning how to do a communication course, but you're learning how to be an auditor. And part of that is making sure the motherfucker never leaves the session. So this is the drill where you put all of that together, and no matter what the pre-clear throws at you, you're going to keep him in session and have him answer the fucking question. And the training stress of this particular drill is the student is taught to hear origination and do three things. One, understand it. Two, acknowledge it. And three, return the pre-clear to session. If the coach feels abruptness or too much time consumed or a lack of comprehension, he corrects the student into better handling. So you ready to go? Okay, so in this one, you're going to be the coach? Yes. Okay. You ready? Mm hmm Okay, start. Do birds fly? Yes, they do. Good. Do birds fly? <sighs> I just realized I've had a headache for years. Really? Mm hmm Well, let's carry on with the session. All righty. Good. Do birds fly? Yes, they do. Good. Do birds fly? Is that a booger hanging out your nose? I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? No. Good. Do birds fly? The seizure of the intense attention of the intended victim by a monotonously duplicated little axe is the technique of the rattlesnake as he fascinates a bird. The snake always sways back and forth, holding the victim's gaze, causing it to look from side to side, and keeping its attention captive by this duplicative technique of fascination. A fatigue point eventually is reached. The snake's prey is thereby immobilized, psychically and physically, and devoured. So don't be tricked by any faker, whether he claims to be holy, quote unquote illuminated, or scientific. They're charlatans who promise, even through the US mail, so stupidly reckless are they, to heal or transform you for large sums of money, some by esoteric teachings, others by their mere presence, or by their invoking some mysterious power. The power they claim to invoke is genuine but it functions only within each of us. It was, is, and probably always will be here, unlimited. The faker who hypnotizes you out of your money is not himself a sane, whole, and happy man. He's usually operating puppet-like on some deep, uncleared set of subconscious patterns as brutal as those of some stray killer shark. The power to create and to recreate is within each of us. It is not to be brought in through the door or the window by the wave of any man's hand, no matter how good or saintly a man he may, in some cases, actually be. I'm warm all over. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you the command again, all right? All righty. Okay. Do birds fly? Yes, they do. Okay. Do birds fly? No. Good. Do birds fly? This is silly. This is silly. This is silly. What's happening? This whole thing is just silly. Well, is it okay with you if we go on a little bit longer? Well, you know, if you want to indulge in silliness, I guess so. Okay. Can I give you the command again? Sure. All right. Do birds fly? Yes, they do. Good. Do birds fly? Weasel flying out your nose. I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? Yes, they do. Good. Do birds fly? Yes, they do. Good. Okay, that's it. That's a pass. Great. Thanks. I hope the TRs we've shown you have given you a good idea of the kind of indoctrination a Scientologist undergoes. These training routines are practiced by Scientologists for hundreds, if not thousands of hours, and these routines repeat themselves through later courses that a Scientologist takes throughout his career all the way up to and through the highest levels of Scientology training. By the time Scientologists have been through hundreds or even thousands of hours of this kind of indoctrination, they are very well conditioned to controlling other people and also to being controlled themselves.
by L. Ron Hubbard. Buy your copy at B. Dalton's, Walden Books, or wherever paperbacks are sold. A fresh look at today's problems. So again, while you think you're doing a communication course, you're having your critical thinking shut down, you're being indoctrinated into the words and terms that are only going to mean something within Scientology, and you're going to learn how to take abuse and both give it to other people. That's what makes this thing so insidious. And also, there's a lot of ex-Scientologists, ex-Scientologists, that talk about how the TRs are actually the good part of Scientology, and then it gets bad as you go up the bridge, especially to the OT levels. Not only is that not true, these are the fundamental drills that make possible everything that I just described. Okay, my friends, so on the next video, we'll pick up the storyline from where we left off, and then on the technical video, we'll continue on with your indoctrination. And until then, as always, stay safe, stay well, stay sane, and most definitely stay cult free. Whatever that means, you know, God is the devil, I mean, clever devil, or whatever, you know, what it, it opens up to wherever you go, whatever you're going to use, where are we going to survive, how's it going to go, you say, I want to be all these individuals and I want to believe all these things, but then the wind blows in another direction. And you say, whoa, whoa, that hurts too much. I got to change my mind about something, you know, because like when it comes down and we go down in the basement and you're laying up on the rack, you're going to do whatever the king tells you to do. Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard.